I don't know about you guys, but me, I'm very open with my kids about a lot of things, including sex, periods, everything. Hey guys, uh, my back is killing me. It is September 7th. I know I'm like so horrible with like daily vlogging, but I'm so ahead that you guys can't really tell. I've been editing for the past four hours and I have a migraine because I haven't ate anything. Um, my back is starting to hurt from sitting in this position. The specialist that we were referred to doesn't accept our insurance, so we need to find a new one that's willing to accept Leon's insurance. Uh, if you were watching a couple clips ago where I was just blabbing and running my mouth, y'all can tell me to shut up whenever y'all want, because, like, you know, I do talk a lot. <laughs> I'm just tired of st staring at the screen, that's why I picked up the camera. Um, he also went to the doctor's um, office to schedule appointments for all of us, not just him. Um, Akina needs to get a meningitis shot. They also suggested that she gets, well, the school suggested that she gets the HPV shot. I went over it with her. I gave her links to the CDC and to the FDA and like I gave her all the information that she wanted and needed and I broke it down to her to like explain to her what it was for, why she needs it and everything like that and she wants to get the meningitis shot but she does not want to get the HPV shot. She feels like at this point in her life she's not sexually active so she doesn't feel like she needs it. I don't know about you guys but me I'm very open with my kids about a lot of things including sex periods everything like all that I discuss it with my kids I don't sugarcoat it I don't beat around the bush my my aunt didn't do it for me she pretty much told me what it was what to expect the only thing that they didn't really discuss with me was about sex and I think it was just like it's just a taboo conversation to have with your kids um, parents and with other people on top of it like to even have a conversation like that with like your friends or something like that it may be uncomfortable to have that kind of discussion and they're old school so to them they didn't feel like it was appropriate to talk to me about it but me I'm the opposite I mean I don't go into details about it with my kids I'm not gonna tell them how it's done what to do what to expect I just tell them that it's okay told her you know there's nothing wrong to be curious it's normal it's natural for you to be curious and to know about it our bodies are going through changes and everything like that I talked to my kids about everything everything um I was sexually molested when I was four and five by a family friend um, I was sexually ab abused and molested by a family member um, and then when I became an adult um, well, no, I don't want to say adult. Well, I was emancipated, so technically I was an adult. But when I was in high school, I was sexually assaulted by classmates. Um, and then when me and Leon first met, like, we were still in, like, the friend stage or whatever, I was raped. I probably wouldn't have gotten pregnant at 17. I was able to tell that I was sexually abused by a, fam a, family, a family friend when I was about 8 or 9. But I was too scared to tell her about... The family member and that that it happened and it was just hard for me and then to find out as an adult like 25 27 28 that that person also did it to other family members I just don't really want to go there because I think some of them they do watch my channel so I rather just talk about myself and my experience about what I went through and I tell my girls all the time and I don't sugarcoat it. There are people out there that will touch you. There are people out there that are that will harm you and kidnap you and keep you and lock you up. I like I don't I don't bullshit with my kids about it. I don't. I just I like to keep that conversation and that door open at all times until until they until I die because I don't want them to go through the experiences that I've been through growing up. And I don't blame anybody. I don't, I'm not angry at anybody anymore. I mean, I'm still emotional about it because I have girls and I have boys. Because people always assume it's just girls that get sexually abused in family member, with, by family members or it just hap or anybody in the community that they trust. That's not the case. <laughs> to know what the experience that I went through and how bad it made me 
be as a person. Um, I was angry. I was an angry teenager. I was an angry person. I was bitter. I was resentful. Like, everything you can think of as a teenager, that with the attitude and everything, I was ten times worse. And that was because of everything that I, I experienced growing up. And it's just... It was just hard for me to be able to express myself in the household that I lived in because I didn't feel comfortable or I didn't feel as if I was a person, if that makes sense. Like, to me, and if you lived in a black family, you pretty much understand where I'm coming from because it's as bad as, as stereotypical as it sounds, this is just very common in most minority homes. You're not able to speak. You're not able to... You only speak when you're spoken to. You can't, like, talk about certain things because it's disrespectful. Um, they're pretty much just, like, brush it underneath the rug and forget about it. Um, deal with it, pretty much. Um, I went to therapy as a kid, and I went to therapy when I was an adult. Like, I think I, the last time I've been to a therapist and been on a psychiatry medication was 2008. Yeah, I think that was the last time. And that's because I went, I saw the law of attraction and it kind of like really exploded my mind. Everything that I thought, my whole mindset about everything, about life, about my past, about my present and my future changed. Live it up.